welcoming me with the strangest feeling. Maybe you can help me. First, here's a thought. Hope is being able to see that there is light, even in the darkness. Desmond Tutu. Welcome. Now, in case you think sadness is that feeling, you'd be right. But it's not strange to us. Plus, we're fighting off the May 11th and Mother's Day emotional minefields in a different way or ways this year. Stay with me. It'll be fun. So Rob wakes up yesterday morning and says, I had the most vivid dream. I dreamt the Leafs made it into the second round of the playoffs and beat Tampa Bay to get there. Of course, I had to laugh with him. Because being the Leafs fan he is, there have been plenty of nightmare scenarios. <laughs> Boston. And given that he remembers their last Stanley Cup win back when Canada was celebrating at Centennial, and the most recent elevation to the second round was in 2004, before I even teamed up with Mike Cooper, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter, as George Harrison sang. Superstitions are a funny thing. Now, Rob... He's not overly cautious, but he does make a point of wearing his Leafs gear, a shirt, or flannel giant tiger pajama pants each game. But on Saturday night, as the Leafs and Bolts were getting ready for overtime, he chose that break to take Dottie for a quick walk to relieve, well, frankly, both of them, of the pressure that they were feeling for entirely different reasons. Turns out the walk wasn't so short after all. When he hadn't returned but overtime had started, like a good wife, I paused the game. While I continued to edit my drift with Aaron's sleep stories on my laptop, trying to stay in the cone while he kept walking, the final score suddenly pops up on my screen thanks to a Toronto Star breaking news tweet. They'd won. I got up and ran to the door looking for Rob to return. When he finally did, I had taken away his phone in case he was texted, which it turns out he was by his diehard Habs fan brother in Montreal. But the surprise was not ruined, and Rob hooted loud enough for the entire neighborhood to hear through the screen door when the Leafs won. But here's the very important realization. Having gotten out of his jammy pants to walk Dottie, Rob watched the extra minutes in his street clothes, and guess what? They still won. This is quite a revelation. It turns out, and hear me out here, that it doesn't matter if we have jerseys or pants on, hats backwards, inside out, a rally hat or no hat at all. The game is going to go as it goes, without any interference or help from those of us urging our team onward. Now, it reminded me of a tweet that Jamie Campbell, who is one of the Blue Jays Sportsnet team, put out a couple of weeks ago after someone tried to lambaste him for saying the Jays could sweep. They did not on that series, as it turns out. But this chucklehead blamed Jamie since his mere mention of the possibility obviously affected the outcome. I tweeted in response to Jamie that if he had that kind of power, would he please just say lottery winner Aaron Davis? And I'd be grateful. Now, I could meet him halfway and buy a ticket, but if he's that good, a ticket will fall into my wallet. Sports fans are weird. We are. We plan our days and weeks around game schedules and try to stay in that cone of silence if by chance the big game is on the PVR. But here's where we kind of messed up. We're going away tomorrow for eight days to a place with lots of TVs, but too many wonderful distractions to watch them. Yes, Las Vegas. It's been a long time, and with our travel schedule being curtailed in the best of ways by lots of summer fun here at home, we decided to bite the bullet and book a trip. So the discussion on Saturday was, if the Leafs lose, you still get to go to Vegas, and if the Leafs advance, which of course they have, your biggest problem will be finding a game. Poor you. Maybe they'll even have the coronation on somewhere too. After all, people will bet on anything. But here's the thing. Whatever the Leafs do, they'll do it without us. Fortunately, this means that Rob won't have to wear his pajama pants when we're out seeing the town. I mean, these days he wouldn't be the only one, but not my husband. <laughs> Enjoy your May. I'll be here on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the usual haunts while we're gone. It's all good. Winnie the Pooh, I'll remind you, is the latest story on my Drift with Aaron Sleep podcast. This Thursday, Lisa Brandt and I have a fresh Gracefully and Frankly for you. So, yeah, I can use this break. And thanks for being here one more time. Talk to you again soon with hopefully lots of travel stories and plenty of negative COVID tests. 
that I will hope for.